Bible class students. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm so glad you chose to join me this morning. For some of you, it might not be a choice, but I'm happy you're here anyway. So today is lesson... Today is lesson 60, and we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 19, verses 16 through 29. And if you haven't scored, you know the drill. Let's get in God's presence. On Monday nights, every Monday night, I have Bible study at my house. I have a group of teenagers anywhere from fifth grade all the way through college. And um, I make cookies and cinnamon rolls and all different kinds of stuff. And we get into the Word and I've taught the kids how to score. So we put on, we go around and decide who gets to choose the song. And we put on a worship song and we sit around the table and we just close our eyes and we really get in God's presence. And every time we do that, the Lord illuminates his word to each one of us. So it's a powerful opportunity to make it more than just Bible class. It comes alive to you. So let's pray this morning. We're going to ask the Lord for the special revelation of his word today. This is a beautiful lesson. I have cried studying this. And if I get through this without crying, um, then that will be a very big deal. But um, this lesson is on compassion. This lesson gets right here to my heart. So I'm really excited about talking to you about it today. So let's pray this morning. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity, God, to be in your presence. And we thank you that you're going to illuminate the word of God. You're going to give us a heart of compassion, a heart of kindness. Lord, for every student watching, for staff, teachers, parents, whoever they may be, we're just praying the word of God would speak to us today. Let this lesson be one that's not easily forgotten or easily and quickly listened to, but God, that, he, that we would take it to heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so this morning, we're going to read through these verses very quickly and get to our focus verse. And our focus verse today is um, Proverbs 19 and verse 17. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul but he that despiseth his ways shall die. And this is our focus verse. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. There's a window of time. It says while there is hope, just a short window of time that, that children can be trained and they can be disciplined to grow up as a mature adult. Okay, we're going back here. Verse 19. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment, for if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. The desire of a man is his kindness. That can also be interpreted mercy or goodness. And a poor man is better than a liar. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. A slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware. And reprove one that hath understanding, and he will understand knowledge. He that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth, causeth shame and bringeth reproach. 27. Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causeth to err from the words of knowledge. Now, I'm going to encourage you on verse 27, put a little check mark there and go back and read it in a few different types of versions because it sounds different from what you're reading it here. The interpretation is a little bit differently. Verse 28, an ungodly witness scorneth judgment and the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the backs of fools. When a uh, 
um, version of that says uh, slap in the mouth. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> but it's very true. So there are so many good verses today that it was very hard to direct it towards one focus verse. But I really feel like the Lord wants to speak into us today, not just a typical lesson. This isn't just a typical lesson. This is a life principle of sowing and reaping. This principle will bring you favor on your life in a very powerful and special way. So let's go back and we're going to read our focus verse together. I'm going to read this in a couple different versions because I want us to get a little different light on this. I want us to look at this in a little different ways. We're gonna look at the, let's look at the New Living Translation. It says, if you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. Um, the Berean Study Bible says, kindness to the poor is a loan to the Lord and he will repay the lender. Um, I've got one more study, one that I love here. The um, Amplified Version says, he who is gracious and lends a hand to the poor lends to the Lord and the Lord will repay him for his good deed. All right, um, let's talk about, first of all, we're gonna go back and take a couple words out of this verse from the King James, and it's the word pity, okay? He that hath pity. And let's break that down just a little bit because there's a lot of different ways to look at it. Number one, pity is compassion. It means condolences, to be to sympathize with. It means to be understanding, to feel sorry for. There is something about having compassion on others that puts you at another level, okay? Not everybody has compassion anymore. Many people in our society have hardened themselves over. Um, and so when we have a spirit of compassion, kindness, um, then God can use that. The Bible talks about that Jesus had compassion on the multitude. God can use that to do his work. The next word I want you to look at is poor. He that hath pity upon the poor. Now the Hebrew, um, interpretation of this is weak or feeble. Not everyone that is poor is weak and feeble. Sometimes people, uh, they make foolish decisions with their finances and they get themselves in a mess, okay? Now, I want to share one of my stories. I got myself in a mess once. I had a little small business. It was a little entrepreneurial business when my kids were small and I felt sorry for people. And I would, it was um, a supplement company and I was just giving them supplements away. And I had, I had bought a credit card and I was using that to put my orders on and then people would just pay me back. But I had this great big heart and I went and I just was buying for missionaries and different ones. I was just, and I got myself into a mess. Like literally I was charging more on that card than I intended on. I was, it wasn't being paid back. And um, I wasn't, you know, going back and paying paying it off like I should have been every month. I'm a firm believer, if you're gonna have a credit card, you need to pay it off every month. So anyway, all that being said, at about $5,000, I got on my knees and I said, God, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know how to fix this. I just feel like I'm digging myself in a hole. I was embarrassed to even talk to my husband about it. He was aware of it, but you know, I was just embarrassed to talk to him. So I, I remember that day I took scissors and I cut it up and I said, I'm not going to use it anymore. I'm just not going to. God, I'm going to trust you for this mess I've dug myself in. God is so good to us, even in our weak points, even in our foolish decisions and foolish this or that. He makes a way of escape within about a week. I got a check-in that doubled, doubled what I had on that card. I didn't tell anybody. This person that sent it to me didn't even live in my state. They didn't even know there was an issue with it. They didn't know because it was a, it was an embarrassing thing. It was the thing that I was embarrassed to even talk about. But they, the Lord had laid this on their heart. And the reason I'm sharing this story and being transparent with you is because God saw my giving. He saw that I was giving to others and he did repay me double. But he also revealed to me that if it's not in our hand to give, we should not give something that we do not have with us. So it was a very difficult lesson for me, but in the end, he bailed me out. Now, <laughs> I've never gotten another 
$10,000 check. <laughs> but I will tell you this, you cannot outgive God. The, the whole um, principle of reaping and sowing, you can sow in this life and your reaping might come in the life to come. It might come in eternal life. But on this earth, the Lord will take care of you if you give. Make sure you have it to give though. And God always gives good rewards. I want you to remember that. When you do a good deed for someone, Jesus talks about doing things in secret, but as you do for others, you have to remember that if you will let God reward you, his rewards are better than man's payments. So when you are helping someone, when you're showing uh, kindness and compassion, don't look for men's rewards. Do it for the Lord. In fact, everything we do, we should do it for God. James chapter 1 verse 27 says that pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Giving is not just a financial thing. It can be our time, our treasure, our talent. It, it can be a wide range of things. So when you're giving of your time to maybe a widow that's feeble and is not able to mow her yard or something like that, you're doing it for the Lord. Anytime you give, Jesus said, if you just even give a cup of cold water unto one of the least of these, you're doing it as unto him. So I want you to remember that the next time that you do something, I want you to literally say this with your mouth, Lord, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. When you help your mama, if you're in, if you've got chores in the house and you you're you're having to do dishes or laundry or something like that, say, Lord, I'm doing this for you. And I want to read you something that's taken from the pulpit commentary. It says, He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. English church people are familiar with this as being one of the sentences of scripture. It is a beautiful thought that by showing mercy and pity, we are as it were, making God our debtor. And the truth is wonderfully advanced by Christ who pronounces in Matthew 25, 40, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Luke chapter six, verses 38, and it said in the New Living Translation, and it says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you give back. God has powerful principles for giving. One more scripture before we go. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed toward his name, in that you ministered to the saints and do minister. There are some great rewards prepared for those that have pity and compassion on those that are feeble and weak among us. God wants to bless you. So open up his hands by opening up your hands. God bless. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.